And today, developers and security teams often seem to be at odds with each other because developers are under the gun to publish code quickly, which can, of course, result in sloppy coding errors and can even mean security teams don't have enough time to review the code for vulnerabilities. And security underpins the world's most commonly used technology. For example, Windows contains tens of millions of lines of code. The software powering BMW cars includes 100 million lines alone. And Google's empire of internet services, from Google Search and Chrome to Gmail and Maps, and we could go on and on, includes about 2 billion lines of code. But this is the important part, it only takes a single coding error or bug to expose every single user. And this is where SEML comes in. But rather than revealing too much detail in the intro and buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to California so we can speak with the CEO and co-founder of SEML. So, a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Thanks for having me, Neil. My name is Hugo de Moor, and I'm the CEO and founder of SAML. SAML is about securing software together, developers and security researchers together, and the whole security community together. SAML automates security expertise so that organizations can scale their security teams without hiring, and it really works. Among our customers are companies like Google, Microsoft, Uber, Credit Suisse, and Nasdaq, and it's used by famous open source projects like Systemd and AMP. Now, before we talk about SAML, though, I just wanted to explore the problem a little bit more, where developers and security teams are often at odds with each other today. For example, developers are under the gun to publish code incredibly quickly, which could result in sloppy coding errors and also mean that security teams just don't have enough time to review code for vulnerabilities. So can you just help set the scene a little and tell the listeners a little bit more about the kind of problems that people are experiencing right across the digital landscape right now that they're probably completely unaware of. You're absolutely right. At the root of the security crisis is the lack of coordination between developers, security researchers, and the security community at large. Developers, as you say, prefer to deliver new features rather than to secure existing code. Uh, they hate how legacy security tools are slowing them down. Security researchers do much of their work manually typically conducting manual security assessments for every big release. Consequently, they spend much time on repetitive work rather than creatively looking for new problems and solutions. The security community exchanges its findings through blog posts and conferences, but they're not very good at sharing the knowledge properly in an automated, easily reusable form. Now, I also think that the behind the apps that make our lives incredibly easy now, such as Uber, Airbnb, Netflix, Spotify, Amazon, and the list goes on and on, behind all that is sophisticated technology that has essentially become completely invisible to customers, and they just expect it to work all the time. So can you tell me a little bit more about the software that underpins the world's most commonly used technology that, of course, many of us just take for granted? Indeed. Behind every app is a huge network of dependencies on other software components. And often these are open source libraries that are very widely used. Now, each and every one of these dependencies presents a risk to every app. For instance, an example that Samuel was recently involved with, uh, many systems use a program called GhostScript to view PDF documents on Linux. Over the past year or so, there have been quite a few new vulnerabilities found where a malicious PDF file could cause arbitrary code to be executed on the user's machine. That's the worst kind of vulnerability. And as a community, we have to make sure that such things cannot happen. Currently, every big company has its own group that tries to find vulnerabilities in their most important open source dependencies. However, there's an enormous amount of duplication between the work that's done at different enterprises, and this fragmentation causes a terrible risk to us all. We can and must pull our resources and come together. Some people might say you should expect the individual creator of these open source components to secure the code in the first place, but that's unreasonable. 
often when they created the open source component, they had no idea that it would become as widely used as it is today. So it's the responsibility of the community, and the community has to make sure that these popular open source components are secure.